I'm going to talk about the Chat GPT SPFX web part today. First, a little introduction about myself. So I'm Nico de Clare, father of two daughters. Um, and I started my career as a SharePoint developer way back in September 2010. So for eight years, I dove deep into the world of backend development. Um, but then something amazing happened. I discovered the world of client side development by jumping into SharePoint framework. So thanks to SharePoint framework, I evolved more into an M365 developer. So now I just develop within SharePoint, um, not just in SharePoint, but also in Azure Power Platform and much more. There's also always something new to learn. I work at Ordina Belgium. Um, it's actually a Dutch, uh, a Netherlands, Belgium company. And uh, you can always reach out to me on my website or one of my socials. So today I'm going to talk about the ChatGPT web part. Um, ChatGPT is quite popular these days, and it takes searching for an answer to a certain question to a whole new level. The idea was therefore to integrate ChatGPT in an SPFX web part so that people could use this as a search mechanism towards the internet within their Microsoft 365 environment. But enough talk, um, let's jump into a live demo. Before we can start using the ChatGPT report, there are some prerequisites that we need to do. First of all, we need an open AI key. Open AI provides access to its AI models and tools through an API that requires an API key. The open AI API key is a unique identifier that grants access to the open AI API, allowing developers and researchers to use open AI's powerful artificial intelligence models in their own applications and research projects. To obtain an API key, um, you typically need to sign up for an API account and provide some information about yourself. But once that you've been approved, you can generate an API key that can be used to authenticate your API request. So you can create and retrieve uh, a key by going to, to platform.openai.com. And once you're logged in and you um, click on your account at the top right, um, you will see that a, a menu will appear. And uh, here you click on View API Keys. In this screen, you can click on Create a new secret key, and it will generate a new key for you. Save it somewhere, uh, because after that, it will no longer be shown for security reasons. An API key is personal, so never share it or use it publicly as it could be intercepted. I'll show you later in this demo. Don't worry about this secret key. I will delete it right after this demo. So next, let's jump to the actual web parts. Once you have um, installed the web parts in your tenant and added it to a particular site, you will see it will ask for the API key like you see here. It cannot work without an API key. For this solution, I opted to uh, store the API key in the web part properties. So if we click on edit, you know, Web part properties, you see that will ask for an API key. Here I paste my API key, and you will see that the screen uh, changes right after it. We save it, and now we can use the web parts. Um, you notice that I use a web, the web parts, but you could, could also use for another method outside um, SharePoint framework or stuff. So next, I can start uh, asking questions against the uh, against the chat GPT, like for instance, what is the Microsoft community call and why is it so fun to attend? Ask chat GPT. Now we have to wait a little while because now it's retrieving the answer. So here it works, no why. But once you ask, the uh, chat GPT web part, you see it, uh, it gives you an answer. After that, um, you can ask a new question. Like for instance, what is football? It's, it's amazing sport, but I'm just going to ask chat GPT about an explanation for this. And you will see it will, um, it will add the answer uh, just like a sort of chat um, in this, in this uh, web part. Um, it, it holds all the answers. If you later on want to um, start over and clear all the, 
all the answers. You can just clear all the answers and you will see it will be cleared. One thing I noticed is um, that there is an API that we use for, for this SharePoint framework web part. But I noticed that the, the answer differs a little bit from the, the answers you get from the actual chat GPT. Um, that's because the chat GPT uses a, a slightly different uh, API. So there, there seems to be a little, a little difference in the answer that you get, but still you get uh, pretty cool answers. So how does it work? Um, let's dive um, into the codes a little bit. First of all, uh, like I already, already said, um, I use the WebPart properties to store the API key. This one is sent to the to the PS file, to the components file, actually. And um, in the components file, there are two important stuff. For this solution, I used uh, the open AI uh, NPM package. It, it's just uh, an, a package that you, you can install which you can find uh, in here. So you have, you just have to do uh, npm install openai and it's, it just installs the package for you. And with that package, um, you can then use uh, the, the, the API in your report. There are two important things. First of all, you have to uh, define a configuration object. Um, that's just an um, an object that holds your your API key. It doesn't do the the connection. It just holds the the API key for you. Um, that's the first thing that's important. The second thing um, that's uh, important is the API itself. So you just uh, use chatgpt dot open AI and then the create completion. If we look into the possibilities all sorts of, of functions you can use. You have the, the, the create an image uh, function, you have the, the create completion or create a file or stuff. That's all uh, things you can do against the OpenAI. Here uh, we choose for the create completion. That's the, just uh, when you ask a question that it gives an answer. For this, it, it's, um, it, it wants an object with, with, uh, with some parameters, some options, um, and these three are the most important. First of all, you have the model. For the model, I uh, used here the text Da Vinci uh, language model, which is the third version already. Um, and after that, you have the, the prompt, which is, which is the actual question that, that you ask. Also, an important thing in, in this object is that the max tokens. Um, it's, it's best to define it because uh, standard you get like an answer of uh, 20 tokens. Uh, that's not <laughs> pretty, pretty long. So um, you have to give the max tokens if you want a longer answer for your questions. So that's actually the, the, the API call in here and you catch it in a, re in a response. And when you get the response, um, you can find your answer in the dot data dot choices, choices first element dot text. And there uh, you can find your answer to your question. For this solution, I just chose to put every answer and the question that is asked into a state. So it holds all the questions and answers in the web part. So that's basically, basically all about the operation, which is actually quite simple, I guess. I also wanted to show you how the API eventually executed. Um, that's also maybe a, a nice thing to know uh, when you go to the to your network uh, tablet uh, network. Um, you can see actually API that's happening. So, uh, You see here, that's actually API. So it's api.openai.com completions. Um, and the important thing about this that I wanted to, to talk about is um, in the headers, you have the authorized authorization uh, header, which is just like the, the OAuth 2.0, where you have a bearer and your access token, but here it's a bearer and your API key. So that's something you have to keep in mind if you want to use something like this publicly. It, 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 your API key can be, can be intercepted. 
So uh, that's definitely something to keep in, in mind. Um, as a last thing, I want to talk a little bit about uh, um, the, the models that, that there are. There are actually four models that you can use. The first one is the da DaVinci model, like the one that we use in the, in the web part. So that is OpenAI's most advanced language model. Um, it has been trained on a huge amount of text data and is capable of generating high quality text in a wide variety of styles and formats. It can understand the most complex ideas and concepts, uh, making it well suited for tasks such as creative writing, content generation, and even coding. This is actually the most used. Uh, next to that, the second one, you have the Curry model. It's a smaller and more efficient language model that's uh, than DaVinci, designed for tasks that require faster text generation with fewer computational resources. Um, it is still capable of producing high quality text, but may not be as versatile as DaVinci. Curry is particularly well suited for tasks such as summarizing large amounts of text data and generating short form content. Third one is Babash, I hope I pronounce it well. Um, it's another language model that is designed to be more accessible to developers and researchers who may not have access to as much computational power as it's required by DaVinci or Curry. It is still capable of generating high quality text, but may not be as efficient or versatile as the larger models. Babash is well suited for tasks such as language modeling and content creation. The last one is Ada. ADA is OpenAI's newest language model designed uh, specifically for natural language processing. Such tasks such as language translation, sentiment analysis, and question answering. It is particularly good at understanding the nuances of human language and can help improve the accuracy, accuracy and efficiency of NLP application. Next to every um, language model, you can also find the, the latest uh, model that you can use in your web part. Like you see text uh, dash query dash 001. So based on your needs, you can uh, opt to use one of these four um, language models. So that's all. Thank you all for attending. That's a great demo and it's very inspiring what uh, cool things that AI can do for us. Uh, one of the things that uh, we should talk about, though, in this demo is Nico has made it really easy for you to embed the API in the property pane. Uh, however, right in a in a production environment, you would normally avoid to to expose the API to the individual users, and that's actually part of the uh, the Chat GPT. Uh, API requirements is that you should not be sharing your API key. Uh, one of the options that are available if you were to to adopt this code for more production ready thing, you could probably use something like Azure Key Vault, or uh, one of my my favorite options is to use uh, the uh, the storage entity, which is available in SharePoint. So you have the SharePoint Management Shell. Uh, or the PMP PowerShell that allows you to set storage entity into your tenant. And then your web part can actually use uh, a, just a regular get HTTP request or use PMPGS to go retrieve the storage entity API key. And that way you don't need to expose the API key to, to anybody uh, and the web part can still access it. Now, let's just uh, to be clear, when the the key is stored in the storage entity, it is available in clear text for people who are retrieving it. Uh, but again, um, you, there's there's a few options that are available here. All now, right, Hugo, on yeah. that one, let's uh, and Nico, don't stop sharing yet. I want to go back on a few things because we do have a few minutes. So let's let's. There's actually a really good point from El Mahmoudi Hassan, uh, which says if you want to hide the token, you could actually hit an Azure function, which is secured within your company. And then in the Azure function, you will actually call the OpenAI API. So you wouldn't actually do this in a secured way. And then as the Azure function calling that API is happening in the server side of Azure, so to say, in quotes on the server side, there's no servers. Yes, there's servers, there's somebody's computer anyway, uh, but nobody would actually have access on the token. You'll just hit the Azure function, and Azure function does the, the bypassing of the calling to the open API. So that is a really good point on the chat, just to call that one out. Uh, 
Nico, any chance you could go back on the on the calling of the API? One thing what I wanted to actually call out, uh, just just for those who are not necessarily super familiar with this, we talked about the token and we mentioned the token, and and the token is basically uh, something which which you have a certain set of. You might consider this. I'm, I'm using metaphor here, but you you have a certain set of. Uh, coins which you buy for having when when you subscribe to the APIs and tokens are basically the complexity of the answer what you're expecting to come back. So you're using more and more of those coins which you have in your backend. Uh, so it's it's basically an AI could give you a what is it? It could give you a novel or it give you it could give you a short answer. And depending on what are you expecting to come back, you don't want to overuse your allocation. So to say, so that's actually a good thing to call out about the token. There was the token configuration mm -hmm. in the code as well.